In this video, we're going to be breaking down the best kept secrets in this year's NFL draft. These are going to be prospects that go after round one and in the later rounds of drafts, but still have immense upside. And we'll start with Roman Wilson, who I believe is a borderline first round pick. We'll probably go in the second round and he's right around a top 10 overall receiver in this draft class. That's how good this draft class is. Now, here's what you need to know about Wilson, who just won the college football championship just a few months ago. Wilson spent four years in Michigan, where his production significantly increased in 2023 when he posted a career high 48 catches, 780 nine yards and 12 touchdowns. Now these stats might not seem impressive to you, but you have to keep this in mind. Michigan was a run heavy team that ranked 117th in passing plays per game. They ran on over 60% of their offensive plays. But on a per play basis, Wilson was one of the best receivers in the nation and the second best wide receiver last year in the entire Big Ten. You can see right here, according to PFF, he had the second highest wide receiver grade only behind Marvin Harrison Jr., who if you watched our top 10 ranking wide receiver video, he's pretty high on that list. Wilson averaged three yards per round outrun in 2023 ranking top 10 in this draft class and he ranked third in red zone efficiency so that gives us some context about his production background but where exactly does he win as a receiver well he was used all over the field at michigan and found success both in the slot and out wide he dominates mostly downfield thanks to his speed and surprisingly great strength for his size and this strength also helps him in the blocking game he's very willing as a blocker and capable and now check this stat out right here it just kind of adds to everything i just said wilson ranked third in the entire nation at how often he was open against single coverage over 40 percent of the time he was open when he faced single coverage and it's also great to point out that this guy just doesn't drop the ball but of course there are some weaknesses we have to address there are some questions about his yards after the catch ability and his overall route tree but based on the way that he was used at michigan it's kind of hard to blame him he wasn't put in certain situations to pick up yards after the catch all that frequently or have a massive route tree now if you watch roman wilson's tape you know that he has speed and the rumor was that he ran a 437 in high school and he backed this up at the nfl combine when he went out there and he ran a 43940 time which at his weight of 185 pounds is well above average and definitely something that you can walk away happy with so wilson has speed reliability at the catch point and he loves to pass block it's a coach's dream at the position in most drafts he'd probably be a first round pick somewhere in the early to mid 20s but in this draft he's going to fall into the second round and be a steal for some team now the next prospect that we have to talk about one of the best kept secrets in the draft and again if you're a diehard you're going to know who malachi corley is out of western kentucky but for the casual fan they don't corley spent all four years at Western Kentucky, where he earned a significant role as a 19-year-old true sophomore, posting nearly 700 yards and 73 catches. He then had his massive breakout year in 2022, where he had over 100 catches, nearly 1,300 yards, and averaged a career-high 12.8 yards per catch. Those were all career highs, and then he backed this up in 2023. He played two less games, so some of these numbers will be lower, but still impressive. 79 catches, nearly 1,000 yards, and again, 12.5 yards per catch. So we know he's productive, but then the question starts to become, okay, how athletic is he? Well, he didn't participate at the NFL Combine work workouts but he did run at his pro day where he reportedly ran between a 446 and a 448 40 time which are strong numbers considering that he's 215 pounds so there's a good chance that now he's going to be taken probably on day two at some point maybe the third round maybe the late second round because of this showing so there's production there's good speed now as a wide receiver specifically where does he win how's he going to translate to the nfl well the most obvious positive to his game is that he's a yards after the catch a yak monster his tape is just littered with explosive plays where he uses his power speed and balance to pick up yards after the the catch and he was actually a former running back in high school which is a big reason why he has a lot of these traits he has the instincts and the explosiveness with the ball in his hands like most running backs who are successful do and check this out from pro football focus just to emphasize even more how much of a yards after the catch monster he is Corley ranked number one in the entire nation averaging 9.2 yards per catch that's basically an entire yard more than anybody else in the country and he ranked sixth in red zone efficiency catching 13 of his 15 red zone targets and leading all wide receivers and yards after the catch in the red zone now the concerns about Corley's game specifically are will it translate to the NFL because Corley earned most of his yards off screens in college last year and 38 percent of his targets were behind the line of scrimmage according to the late round prospect guy now the question becomes is this a product of Western Kentucky wanting to get the ball in their best player's hand and not trusting their quarterback or is it a product of Corley's skill set now this is something that we're probably just not going to know the answer to but it does bring up some concerns because we've seen this be an issue with previous prospects like Traylon Burks a few years ago who was a first round pick for the Tennessee Titans and he had a lot of production in college behind the line of scrimmage and off screens. Now, so far in the NFL, Burks has dealt with a lot of injuries. He's shown some efficiency when he's actually been healthy. So it's hard to judge if he has translated or not to the pro level. At this point, the injuries have kind of derailed him. Now, when you're thinking of an NFL player to compare him to, you're going to see a lot of this. Debo Samuel, it's what Jordan Schultz said on the Pat McAfee show. That's probably his most popular comp that I've been seeing thrown out there. I don't think that they're definitely comps in terms of one-to-ones. I could see the yards after the catch stuff, but you're also getting some LaVishka Chenault out there, which isn't the best comparison. So there's 
there's no doubt about it. Corley is going to be a risky player. He's coming from that smaller school, but you don't have to spend a first round pick on him like the Titans did with Traylon Burks. You could probably get him in round three. Now, the next man up is Jalen Polk out of Washington. And you might remember this name because when we broke down Roma Dunze in our ranking the top 10 wide receivers in this draft class, we talked about Polk because he was one of his teammates. Polk was a member of Washington's elite wide receiver room the past three years, a room that consists of three future NFL players, including a guy who will be probably a top 10 pick this year in Roma Dunze. Now, despite the elite competition for targets at Washington, we saw Polk still have two strong college seasons. He transferred to the program in 2021 and he ends up fracturing his clavicle early in the year, only plays three games, but he comes back in 2022 and right away has nearly 700 yards, averages 16.9 yards per catch. And then in 2023, besides Adunze, he was the second leading receiver on this team with almost 1,200 yards and 69 catches. Now, Polk wins in totally different ways than a Roma Dunze, and here's what I mean. He has an elite downfield skill set from ball tracking to reliable hands at the catch point, and he might have the best hands in the class. He's a contested catch guy who picks up yards after the catch as well. And according to PFF, Polk ranked ninth in deep yards and sixth in deep catches last season. So he's an elite downfield weapon with a reliable hands, but he also has the ability after the catch that a lot of jump ball guys just don't have. Now, some of the downsides to his games are a limited route tree and his overall blocking, which is just not the role that he played at Washington. He was going down the field often. That's where they used him at. It doesn't mean he can improve upon his route tree. The interesting part is how productive he was in 2023, despite playing next to Aroma Dunze, and that matters. You could look at it and say Adunze soaked up all the attention, but it could also be shown that he was good enough, Polk, to earn 69 catches despite playing next to Adunze and another NFL receiver in Jalen McMillan. Polk has good size at the wide receiver position. He's 6'1 and 203 pounds, and at the NFL Combine, he shows that he has good enough speed. Because as you can see right here, he ran a 4'5", 40 time, which for what his role is and the way that he plays and his size is well above average, 64th percentile speed score, and he also showed off some solid burst, 82nd percentile burst. So you get this big play receiver who is one of the most reliable jump ball players in the draft. When I watch his tape, he reminds me of Packers wide receiver Romeo Dobbs, who has had a solid NFL career so far, both in the red zone and downfield, thanks to his reliable hands for Green Bay. Now, our next man up that we're going to be talking about, you might actually have heard this name, but he's probably not going to be drafted in the first round or maybe even two. And in my opinion, that's a mistake. And it's Malik Washington out of Virginia. Washington spent five years in college with his first four coming at Northwestern, where he put up fine production in a lower volume passing attack before transferring to Virginia for his final year in 2023. And boy, oh boy, this is where he broke out as a senior in the ACC, he put up 110 yards, over 1,400 receiving yards. He had more receiving yards in 2023 than his previous four college seasons combined, and his nine touchdowns were triple his previous four college seasons combined. So here's what you should know about the traits and how Washington wins. He was mostly a slot wide receiver last year, where he spent 92% of his snaps in the slot. It was one of the most productive and efficient wide receivers in the entire nation. Washington ranked second in PFF wide receiver grades behind only Malik Neighbors last year, and he was fifth in yards per route run ahead of Roma Dunza. Now his best traits are his balance, quickness, and reliable hands at the catch point. Now a big downside that a lot of people will point to is this right here. He's just five foot eight overall. I think that matters more at the running back position than the wide receiver position because look at this. He actually hauled in in his college career 57% of his contested catches despite being 5'8", which just shows that he does not let size affect him in that way. And Washington makes up for his smaller height with a 90 pound frame and impressive strength plus burst. He posted a top 3% all time jump score at the combine. Now, another concern people throw out there is his fifth year production, but this can just be blamed on the Northwestern program for the first four years that wasn't known for passing the ball. At the combine where Malik Washington did get invited to, he did show up and participate, which was good to see. He ran a 4.47, which at his size of about 190 pounds, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not all that great. A 39th percentile speed score, so this starts to become a little bit of a concern, but does show his great burst, which is where he mostly wins 97th percentile burst score. And the reason the speed isn't as much of a concern for his game is because he wins out of the slot with more so that shiftiness and that quick twitch ability the speed straight line speed isn't as much of a concern so player profiler closely compares him to zay flowers who was drafted last year and i could not agree more flowers was just five foot nine and didn't run the greatest 40 time when he was coming out and had a successful rookie year now one key difference was in college flowers was used more on the outside but we might see this evolution to malik washington's game with the new coaching staff in the nfl because we've seen that as recent as last year when josh downs mostly a slot receiver in college transitioned to the nfl and had some success on the outside side as a rookie. Now, before we get into some of the final best kept secrets, and these guys are probably the best secrets in the entire draft, in my opinion, I want to let you know about the fantasy blueprint. If you're in a fantasy football league or plan to be in one, this is for you. Simply put, it's going to include everything you need to prepare for your draft. And then every single week of the NFL year to help you get to the playoffs and win your league for the low price, the entire year of just 10 bucks. But now here is the most important piece. You follow these two simple steps to get access the link in the description below. But if you don't make your fantasy playoffs, I'll just refund that 10 bucks. So you'll get all the information for the entire year and either make your fantasy playoffs or you get your 10 bucks back. This is risk-free. So to get
get access to your fantasy blueprint today that over 5,000 people used last year to successfully get to their playoffs. Just click the link in the description below or scan that QR code on the screen right now. So now let's talk about a tight end prospect who can make a major impact later in the 2024 season. And that is Theo Johnson out of Penn State, who hasn't been talked about all that much outside of his combine performance, but there's a decent chance he's one of the first three or four tight ends off the board. Now, when you look at Theo Johnson's overall college production, you're not going to be blown away. He spent four years at Penn State and he never topped 34 catches, as you can see right here in his final year, or 341 receiving yards. But this needs context because Penn State is known for producing great tight ends. And Theo Johnson had to play with a handful of them during his time at college. Right away, he played with Pat Frymuth in his first year. Frymuth, one of the best tight end prospects in the last decade, a second round pick a few years back by the Steelers. And then in 2021 and 2022, he had to play alongside and at times behind Brenton Strange. And if you don't know who Brenton Strange is, he was a second round pick last year by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And look, you didn't hear about him a lot during the season because one of the best tight ends offensively in the league was Evan Ingram and he had to play behind him. So 2023 was the first year that we got to see Theo Johnson be the guy. And he had 34 catches for 341 yards, not to mention his seven touchdowns were the third most in the entire nation for tight ends and led this Nittany Lions team. And again, 34 catches, 341 yards. It's fine for a tight end. It doesn't stand out, but you have to add even more context about this Penn State offense because Penn State ranked just 79th in passing yards per game, only 215 yards per game behind teams like the Louisiana Cajuns and the Toledo Rockets. So when we start to add this context, you can patch in some pieces to his profile and see that this really all wasn't his fault. Now here's specifically what Theo Johnson as a tight end and a player does well. He's an incredible blocker, both in the run and pass game. His catch radius is very large and he's a great athlete. But we need to go deeper on this last point because it's not just that he's a great athlete. He's an exceptional one of a kind athlete because at the NFL combine, he put on a show. He ran a four, five, seven, 40 time. That doesn't sound impressive, but for a tight end, it is. And for a tight end who's 260 pounds, it's elite. I mean, that's faster than some of the wide receivers in this draft class. And then Johnson went out there and showed elite burst and great agility. He is the number one tight end athlete in this class. So we know some of his strengths as a blocker and now an elite athlete. What are some of his downsides? Well, Johnson's route tree appears to be pretty limited on his college film, and he's a bit of a raw receiver in this regard. At the end of the day, Johnson is a more than capable pass catcher who's an elite athlete, and you may refer to him as a developmental player, but I believe he's shown enough on tape to be held higher than those standards. In my opinion, there's a ton of upside for Theo Johnson, and if he is taken, if a team reaches a little bit in the second or third round, there is a ton of upside then for even fantasy football in his rookie year. Now let's talk about a running back, and it's Dylan Lobb, who we actually discussed in our most overlooked rookies video from a few weeks back, but I have to include him here because even more positive things have come out about him. One GM just recently referred to Dylan Lobb as the best receiver in this class, not just the best running back receiver, overall best receiver. Now that sounds a bit crazy, and it probably is when you compare him to like the top five to 10 receivers in this class, but it's at least worth looking at his background. So Lobb spent five seasons at New Hampshire where he broke out in his fourth year, 2022. You can see here nearly 1,300 rushing yards, 17 total touchdowns, but the big key, and the reason that we're talking about him is his receiving ability, nearly 500 receiving yards. So he had 1,700 total yards and 49 catches. That's more than four receptions per game. Now those four catches per game ranked second in the FCS in 2022. And believe it or not, in 2023, he got better because in two less games, he goes out there, he has 800 rushing yards, 16 touchdowns, but 68 catches in two less games. He was averaging nearly seven catches per game and 700 receiving yards. So like 80 plus receiving yards per game, just nuts for a running back. And let's not forget the historic game he had against Central Michigan when Lobb went for 12 catches and 295 receiving yards as a running back. That's just wild. And it shouldn't shock you that Lobb is the number one graded pass catching running back in this class because he's led all running backs in catches, yards, and targets over the past two years. And according to the late round prospect guide, Lobb's 25.3% best season reception share is the highest the database has ever seen. And what that simply translates to is that he earned 25% of his team's receptions last year in 2023, 25% as a running back. Now, although by far and away, his elite skill set is the receiving department. He's not just a one trick pony. He has other skills as well as a running back. Lobb has great burst footwork and agility and has been clutch in short yardage situations, converting on 75% of these situations the past two seasons. And to make things even better, we saw him have a solid NFL combine. A 4 5 4 40 time is fine. It's slightly above average. We see the great burst. We see the great agility and also the strength on the bench press 76 percentile. Now, of course, since this is going to be somebody who goes in the later rounds, there's going to be red flags. He earned all this production at a smaller school against weaker competition in the FCS, and he's already 25 and a half years old and will turn 25 in December. For an NFL running back and a prospect, that's basically as old as it gets. These are legit concerns, but that's exactly why he's probably going to go on day three of the NFL draft in like round four, five, or even six. But here's the thing. At the Senior Bowl, this is a nice little saving grace for him. He performed very well against some of the top competition in the entire nation. Now, I like this tool, the Mock Draft Database. It takes all 
all the mock drafts in the entire world that are reputable at least and it basically puts them into this one big graph and shows the average you can see the highest that he ever got ranked was 38th which is the second round that's absolutely crazy i could actually see him going in the third round second round would be crazy right now on average he's projected to be a sixth round pick if you see him go and get that fourth round even third round day two capital that's when you start to become really really interested especially for fantasy football in terms of his closest comparables to the nfl i could think of two former patriots james white is probably like the cop-out answer but more specifically probably is going to be Deion lewis who when you talk about the speed element not being as elite speed just average speed but the ways that they win Deion lewis former titan and patriot is someone who stands out these are the best kept secrets in my opinion in this year's nfl draft but if you want to see who the best overall wide receivers are the top 10 that i will rank out for you and break them down well, check out this video right over here.